So I started working in the media industry um, back in uh, 2002. And uh, my first gig was presenting a travel series, which came about uh, completely out of the blue. <laughs> and it was an amazing experience, a great way to start my career as a, as a presenter, uh, as a researcher, as a writer, as a producer. I, uh, once I had a taste of that, I just wanted to continue. Um, started to enhance my journalistic skills. I've always been very curious by nature since I was a child. Um, so going into this was just magical for me. Um, and that led to other opportunities, um, both in Europe and equally in the Middle East, uh, primarily here in Dubai, in the UAE, uh, having presented uh, multiple shows, having been on the red carpet, interviewing artists and directors and actors uh, during the film festivals here, equally working with uh, production houses in Abu Dhabi, uh, in Kuwait, and uh, it's been amazing, I have to say, especially as a Middle Eastern woman who was born, bred in London, uh, with my background, coming to Dubai uh, with a completely new, you know, perspective, uh, blown away by its modern approach um, in the media industry. Yes, once upon a time, there was a lack of women um, working in these production houses, I have to say, whether it's uh, the film crew, producers, editors, but that's definitely changed now and it's amazing and I'm very, very excited to see that just continue through and develop more and more. When I'm asked, like, so what do you do in life? And I start to give some sort of a description without going into too much detail until I feel, you know, comfortable enough to do so. But wait, wait a minute, either you're this or you're that. I mean, hang on a minute, no, that's incorrect. I can be an artist, I can be a singer-songwriter, I can be a TV presenter, producer, journalist, I can be a voiceover artist, you know, I can be a partner or a potential mother one day, I can cook, I can be a sister and a daughter, I can be me. And this is, this is what's going on here. We're, we're forgetting ourselves, we're not accepting ourselves for who we truly are. You are enough. I am enough. I have to say, it has been challenging um, throughout my life, actually, being a woman on this earth. I went to an all-girls school. That was extremely challenging. Um, it was only until university that I really started to understand my femininity, you know, like who I am as a woman. In the workforce, again, extremely challenging. Uh, a lot of women would just allow their egos to get in the way um, or would be intimidated perhaps by me being a little bit more outspoken or for looking different or, uh, having a different ethnic background. Um, it really wasn't easy to maintain this equilibrium. And in terms of, you know, my sense of identity, it was challenging. I had a lot of questions and, you know, it's only with time and experience and traveling and doing a lot of self-work and reading and questioning life as a whole that I've started to understand, you know, why I'm here. And uh, we are all storytellers, and I believe that it's important to share and it's important to express how we feel. What I can't stand is hypocrisy. Okay, at the end of the day, there have been times where that person has no idea about me. My upbringing, my schooling, my education, uh, my family background, 
you know, some people have no idea that I started working at the age of 13, for example. Um, my parents were very encouraging of taking on a part-time job on the weekends, or whether it's babysitting or teaching uh, French or art or helping someone with their singing, for example. We're a very, you know, artistic family as well. Um, and when it came to dealing with jealous girls or women, even teachers, believe it or not, my own teachers at school were jealous. And I know a couple of other uh, school friends who are still very dear to me, we're, we're soul sisters, till now, um, we would sit and discuss this every time we meet and bring back these memories. Uh, you know, we've dealt with them, but it's, it's just amazing. And it's because we were different. We had something, we all have something different to offer. We're all special in our own way, but there was just this lack of acceptance for being who we are, for looking the way we are, for sounding the way we are. And um, how did I overcome it? By taking it as a compliment. <laughs> it's the only way. Uh, yes, I'm a sensitive soul, but um, I stopped allowing it uh, to affect me mentally, emotionally, physically, and uh, spiritually. A cool girl in my eyes would be someone who is natural, has self-confidence, is compassionate, has a lot of self-awareness and awareness about the world, and has taken the time and the patience to really reflect on herself, on her strengths, and I don't like to say the word weaknesses, um, but I would say the opposite of her strengths. Um, someone who is worldly, who enjoys to travel, who is curious by nature, who's inquisitive, who wants to get to know herself more through travels and seeing the world through a different perspective, um, through different cultures, religions, art, music, food. A cool girl is someone who is at peace with herself, who is relaxed, um, who's open-minded, appreciative of the life that she has.